All right, welcome to Buff Zone. We're here at the uh, Pac-12 Football Media Days here in Hollywood, and we've got Lincoln Kennedy here. And Lincoln, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, you've been, uh, you know, analyzing football for a couple of years, and I played for a long yeah. time. And uh, so, what are your thoughts as you come into this Pac-12 season? There's a lot of parity in this conference. What are your thoughts on this on this conference? Well, as a whole, I think that you look around the country, and there's so many other conferences that we deem top heavy in the press. Mm -hmm. But as a whole, you have 12 teams that are dangerous in the, in the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that because you, you take for heart, you know, who's been relevant in the past. Who's, 12 notable schools, 12 notable teams that have all had success in the past. Even when you go back to the days of the Big 8 when I was younger and Colorado was a presence there against Nebraska and Oklahoma, always viable and always challenging for the title, that can somehow happen. And it doesn't matter because any given year, someone is able to turn it around and make their presence felt. This year I think it's going to be very interesting because there's so many unsettled quarterback situations in the conference. Certainly. And quarterback is such a huge thing, obviously. Yes. Um, does that make... Does that give some intrigue to the Pac-12 this year because we don't know who's going to play quarterback in a lot of places? Well, you know, they all all the football pundits will tell you that in order to win this game, you got to have a quarterback, mm -hmm. okay? So that gives you an added advantage. What do you do when you don't? Well, you've got to find other creative ways of moving the ball. Yeah. So I actually, I think in years past, this has been a league, a division, a conference of quarterbacks. Now more so than ever, I think it's going to be a conference of running backs. Yeah. I think you're going to get back to the old-fashioned way of playing football because you have to establish that comfort ability yeah. for whoever's quarterback in, in the backfield yeah. to be able to have time and to have a presence. And they can't, they can't do it without a, a good running game. What about Colorado? Obviously, we cover the buffs here at Buff Zone. Um, Colorado's got a lot of question marks. They're, this is a very pivotal year for them. Their quarterback is the most experienced in the conference, but he's come off barring an injury. injuries. Yeah. Barring injuries. And so, everyone knows in our position that if he's not healthy, we don't know how much of a chance Colorado has. Right. Healthy, he gives them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't been able to stay on the field, hasn't been able to stay healthy. So that's the biggest question mark I have for Buffalo football. Yeah. Who's quarterbacking and how healthy they're going to be. Other than that, I think this is a, I think the buffs are dangerous. So let me ask you this. Let's let's say Sefo's healthy, completely healthy, ready to go. This program has been trying to climb the ladder. Certainly. Do you think with a healthy healthy Sefo, this team can climb the ladder and get to a bowl game? Well, I mean the thing is like last year we've been able to pound our chest because the Pac twelve put ten teams in bowl games. Yeah. I think you can have that again this year. Sefo's healthy. I think Colorado has a chance. Yeah. I think they showed signs of being dangerous and moving in the right direction. Yeah. Everybody, including myself, has the most, uh, most utmost respect for this coaching staff and what this team has been able to do in the uphill battle they've had. Cephal's healthy. I do give them a chance, yes. You played offensive line. Offensive yeah. line is a big key. Their O-line was so banged up last year. How key is continuity on the offensive line and keeping those guys healthy all year? The, the, the art of offensive linemen is nonverbal communication. And more importantly, you have to have five guys who are all on the same level, who want the same thing, who know like the back of their hand what their comrade around them is doing. That's hard to do if you don't have equal time or a lot of time together. That's where the continuity steps in. And without, and hard, it's hard to build upon that if guys are in, injured, you know, because right. you want to put the best athletes on the field. So with that being said, the more time you're able to keep an offensive line together, the more effective they're going to be. And I've always believed when it comes to this game, there are two positions that needs as many reps as possible to be successful. One is quarterback, the second is yeah. offensive line. Our fans are biased towards the bus. So I'm at, I'm asking you, <clears throat> excuse me, are you excited to see this team and see what they can do and see if they can climb the ladder and uh, be the team that they think they can be. I'm most excited to see Sefo's growth because yeah. if he's able to stay on the field, we will see a, 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 a very good progression as far as proficiency and ability in quarterback play, much like we saw with Jared Goff, if he's yeah. able to stay on the field. So that's a big if. That has to yeah. be answered first. And I'm glad to see him here at Media Day. I know Buff fans are excited. As you said, us in the media are excited because yeah. he's an exciting player to watch. Yeah. Be a lot of cold days during the football season. Are you enjoying the weather? Oh, I live in Arizona. This is nothing for me. I'll <laughs> right. take this all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> Lincoln, appreciate it very much. And I uh, look forward to seeing you throughout the season. Thank you for Thank you. having me. Appreciate it.